In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this advertisement for a fashion sale using Adobe Photoshop. Now, before we get started on the tutorial today, there's a few files we need to download. If you're in my class, you can simply grab them off the virtual library. Although, if you're watching on YouTube, you can download the files by clicking on the links in the video description below. The files you need are these two photos here of some chicks modeling some clothes, and we've also got these three icons. Okay, so make sure you've got them downloaded onto your computer and you've got easy access to them ready to use as we go through the tutorial today. Once you've got them um, all downloaded and saved, you can jump across to Photoshop and create yourself a new file. I'm going to go to the print templates up the top and choose the A4 size template, which is 210 by 297 millimeters in size. Our resolution should be set to 300 pixels per inch, so we can print this out at high quality print. And our color mode will be CMYK color. Click create when you are good to go and you will get an empty white canvas on the screen. Just press control zero to just zoom it back a tiny bit so you can see your entire workspace. Now the thing we're going to start with today is the background. If we just have a look back at the example over here, you can see in the background we've got those red and yellow stripes. The way to make them quickly is just draw a rectangle and turn it on its side a bit. So to do that, in your toolbox on the left hand side of the page, we're looking for our rectangle tool. And the color we're looking for is a kind of reddish color. Um, so if we go to our reds up here, we're probably looking for this, it's kind of a washed out red that we're going for today. So click on OK once you've got that. Draw yourself a rectangle on the page. Doesn't matter how big right now. I think I might make that a little bit darker actually. Yeah, something like that probably looks a bit better. And I want you to grab your move tool. Now, if you're like me, for some reason I've got slightly rounded edges on these rectangles. So if you can see these little white circles, just click on them and drag them out towards the corners so that they disappear onto the corners and you end up with sharp corners on your rectangle like so. Now to make these stripes, all we need to do is rotate our rectangle. So click on it again with your move tool and if you hover around any one of the corners, you'll see your mouse cursor changes to a curly arrow. And that will allow you to click and drag and rotate your rectangle. So it's now just a matter of resizing it. I'll let you deform it this time and get it um, looking like a big red stripe on the page. So I'm going to go probably at about that kind of angle, that kind of position. That should be pretty good for now. And when you click off it, it looks pretty cool. Now once you've got one drawn, what I would do next is copy and paste it and move it down to the other corner. So a quick way to copy and paste is if you select your shape and hold down Alt on your keyboard, you will see that your cursor changes to a little black and white arrow. And now if you click and drag, it simply creates a duplicate copy. And if you let go, that just drops it in. And what we're going to do is move it down to roughly there so we get this somewhat asymmetrical looking design. So two red stripes on the page. The bit in the middle, we want to um, shade in a pale yellow kind of color. So to do that, we need to go back to our layers panel over on the right hand side and select our background layer. And we're just going to use our paint bucket tool from our toolbox. It's hiding under the gradient tool. And what I'm going to do is select a pale yellow kind of color. So not too green. Still a bit green for my liking. Yeah, something like that looks pretty good. And once you've got your yellowy color picked, just click once on your background and it will shade it in. It's actually probably a little bit too yellow for my liking. I want to just tone it down a bit more. So I'm just going to pull it back towards the left. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Let's have a look at the example. Pretty similar. Okay, so that is our background done. So that we don't move our shapes around while we're editing at the moment, what I'm going to do is lock all these into place. So if you can select your layers and hit the little padlock, what it does is it locks them so you can no longer accidentally nudge them or select them and edit them when you don't want to. They're locked into position now. Okay, so there's no touch in that background for the time being. If you don't want to come back and move these around later on, you can just select the padlock to make it disappear and then you have free reign over what you do with it again. But that's the first thing. Next thing I want to do is I want to put in a triangle and inside of that triangle, I'm going to put 
the first photo of the model. So let's do that. We're going to go down to our Shapes tool here and select the Triangle tool. And I'm just going to pick any old colour, maybe um, black will do for now so we can see it clearly. And I'm going to hold Shift and click and drag a triangle onto my page. Using my Move tool, I'm going to hover around one of the edges, hold Shift, and then just click and drag to rotate it around 180 degrees. I'm then going to position it in the middle of the page, like vertically, so it's vertically aligned in the centre. Just move it up towards the top in a position similar to that. Okay, that's not a bad size at all, that. Um, once we've got it in, next thing we need to do is put the photo inside of it. So to do that, you need to go to File and Open, and open up the first model image. So it's this one here. Let's hide a few of these panels for a sec. Now with this chick, um, sorry, with this chick open, what we're going to do is simply go to Select and Select All. We'll press Control A. You'll see a marquee box appear around our selection. We copy that photo. Go back to our first tab here. And we want to paste it inside of this triangle. So there's a little trick to do that. You need to go to your Layers panel. And where you see Triangle 1, I need you to hold down the Control key on your keyboard and click this little black triangle you see here inside of this rectangle. When you Control click that, you'll see a marquee appears around it, or Marching Ants. That means we've selected that triangle shape. And now we can just go up to Edit. We can go Paste Special and Paste Into. And that pastes our photo inside of that triangle. Okay, so I can move that photo around in any direction and it will appear inside the triangle but not outside of it. Okay, so that looks good, but what we need to do is make it bigger so it fills the triangle up. So just hold shift and drag out from the edges and then move it back and position it somewhere in the center of the page, just roughly like that. Press the little tick at the top of the page when you're done and you've got your model inside of the triangle. So that looks good. Next thing I want you to do is just head over to your Layers panel here, and I'm going to get you to double click in this empty space, and we're going to put a Drop Shadow Effect onto it. Now the Drop Shadow Effect is going to be at 35% opacity. The angle of the shadow is going to be coming in at 65 degrees. The distance is going to be set to 25 pixels, spread to 10%, and the size will be 35 pixels. Okay, so you can see now behind the triangle we've got a bit of a drop shadow. So click on OK. And that just helps it pop out and I guess make it look like it's floating. Just makes the image a little bit more exciting. Now we're going to do something similar just next to that. Just a smaller version. So I'm going to do another triangle with a drop shadow, but we're going to put another photo inside of it. So I'll go and grab your triangle tool again. Draw yourself another triangle that's going to be a bit smaller. Using your Move tool, get it into position, which is just up next to the existing triangle. It's probably a little bit big, actually, so I'll just make it a little bit smaller. Now, oops, I just bumped a button there. If I zoom in here, I just want to make sure that this bottom of the triangle is roughly, oh, sorry, the tip of the triangle is roughly running along where the bottom of this triangle is. Okay, it's all about getting our alignment looking nice. I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to do the same thing again now, but we're going to paste in the second model image. So let's open it up by going to File and Open, grabbing model number two, choosing Select All, we'll copy it, back to the first one here, and we need to select this triangle by going to our Layers panel, you can see Triangle 2 has appeared, so Control click on this little rectangle you can see next to the Triangle 2, that will select it. And now it's just a matter of doing the paste special and paste into. Now this one's a little bit fiddly to play around with to get the sizes right, but just to make sure it fills the entire triangle. Oh, here's something about there. It's alright if you chop a leg off a little, or a foot off a little bit. Probably want to see more of a head rather than a feet. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now all you need to do is double click next to layer 2 here in your layers panel. That'll bring your layer style box back up. Go and throw a drop shadow on. Now the drop shadow is pretty similar. It's going to be 35 degrees again, uh, coming in at 65 degree angle. Instead of a distance of 25 pixels, we're going to make it 10 pixels, a little bit smaller. Spread and size are going to be the same at 10% and 35 pixels respectively. Click OK, and you've now got your second triangle in. So that's looking pretty sweet. 
Um, next thing we might whack in is this heading at the top that says a Valentino fashion. So we've got plenty of room at the top to add some type or text in. So grab your type tool. I'm just going to change my color to white here. And I'm going to change my font to Arial Black. So I've got Arial here. Just change the style to black. And I'm going to make it a bit bigger. I might go down to about 36 point. Now clicking on the page, I'm going to use caps lock and I'm going to write Valentino. That's the name of our um, fashion mob. Yeah, I just want to check a few things here. Um, our VA here, which is our tracking. Let's set that back to zero. I think that looks pretty good. Yep. So there we go, Valentino, get that positioned in the center of the page roughly, like so. Probably wants to be all on the red though more than anything, so I might need to actually adjust this red background before I go any further, because it's a little bit hard to read on that light yellow. So I'm going to unlock this red rectangle and just move it down a bit more. About there, for now. You can always change it a little bit later on. All right, so we've got Valentino written in. Next thing we're going to write underneath it says fashion. We're going to do this in a different style of font. So grab your font or tech type tool again. And I want you to write in capital letters fashion. And we're going to highlight it and change it from Arial Black to just normal Arial. So Arial Regular. The size is going to be dropped to something fairly small, about size 14. And then I'm going to up the tracking. So the tracking, remember, is the space between each letter. So hit this little folder up the top where it says VA. That's our tracking. Bump it up to about 1680. That's a huge amount of space between each letter. Okay, and you can see when we put this underneath the word Valentino, it's going to fit almost perfectly. You might want to even make that a wee bit bigger. Up to 1700. Might even go up to about 1740, 1760. Just around that area, position in the center of the page too. So that looks pretty cool, Valentino fashion. Once that is in position, what I might do is just nudge up these two triangles a bit. Oops, to move these triangles, we're actually gonna to have to convert them to a smart object. You might've noticed then when I went to move it, all it does is moves the photo inside of it, which is not what I want. So on layer 1, we're going to have to right-click on it and just convert it to a smart object. Do the same for layer 2 here. Convert to a smart object. Might be worth renaming them too. I might call this one um, large triangle. And this layer 2, we might call it small triangle. And now we should be able to just move them up. Oh, then we've got the black rectangles behind them too. It's a bit annoying, I'll just have to select it all. There we go, we'll move them up. We might even be able to delete these triangles actually, since they're not serving any purpose. Let me just see, so if we click on the triangle 2 layer and bin them, yeah, there we go, those two black triangles just bin them. They were serving no purpose, so we're able to delete them now. That just leaves us with these shapes. All right, so let's have a look. Let's compare. That's looking pretty similar to what we've got on our example. Valentino fashion, we've got the two triangles. Next thing we might add in are these little triangles that are scattered around um, the two models. So that's pretty easy. All we need to do is draw ourselves a triangle. So I'm going to draw one on the page here. Now I'm going to change its color. So in the properties here where it says fill, I'm going to choose that ready kind of color that we had before. And let's just scatter them around in similar positions to what we've got here. So it's probably a bit big that one. I'll make it a bit smaller, but we've got one just over here. You can put these wherever you like. I'm just going to try and make it similar to my example. So that's one. We put another one down here and make it a bit smaller. Do the same again down below. I'll make this one even smaller again. Looks good. Um, we've got one over to the left here. And then I noticed one up here as well. And over the edge of our model. And this one had the opacity drop down a bit. So in layers, what you can do with that 
triangle selected is drop the opacity from 100% down to say 70% that just makes it a little bit transparent I guess it adds a bit more interest to the design by doing that um, and it looks like there's one more little red one over here which I've forgotten to put in so let's just shove that over there Make it a wee bit smaller there we go so we've got our red rectangles scattered around a few little yellow rectangles now ah rectangles sorry triangles will look good as well so I'm going to change this triangle I wonder if it'll let me just change its fill color here using the properties I choose a goldy kind of color hmm. this one looks nicer so there's a gold kind of color for these ones uh, so you've got one little guy that goes in here and another one up here so I'm just going to click on this and duplicate it up there make it a bit smaller there's a few yellows stuck around we've got three over on the right hand side here as well that we need to put in so let's just duplicate these over here so we had one bigger one didn't we and then two smaller ones one two Let's just make these a bit smaller. One and kind of similar size, these guys. Two. All right, so just you do the same. Scatter a few of those triangles around. They don't have to be in the same uh, position as what I've got them. Okay, it's just a matter of um, scattering them around there and make them look a little bit arty farty. So that's the top section of our design all done. I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to come back in the second video and just finish off the bottom half of um, our flyer. So I'd probably save what you've got for now. When you do save, make sure you are saving as a PSD file, so Photoshop document file. That will allow you to come back to all your layers here and edit them later on. Okay, I'll see you in part two's video.